Hey, Mo. Nice. Hi, how are you, Rhonda? Good. Nice to have you with us again today. Oh, I'm excited about it, too. So um, I will welcome you and everybody to this roundtable, uh, Anna Sudan Roundtable, and we will continue mm -hmm. our conversation about sports um, and fitness. Um, so, Mo, I'm going to get straight into it. Um, last week, or uh, not last week, but in fact a few weeks ago now, um, our first session was talking more in general about sports and, you know, various different elements of the industry and benefits, etc. But I want to start from this session on to start homing on specific areas. Yeah. So mm -hmm. my very first question to you straight away is, can you talk to us about the uh, health benefits of physical activity? Okay. Um, and uh, if you can talk to us about the benefits for children as well as, as adults. All right. So the benefits of health, uh, of sports into health, uh, well, basically for children uh, will be around the same as uh, for adults. The only difference for children will be that they will have a bigger psychological impact, you know, because for them, they're still discovering the world. So, First of all, they will have they will develop skills as team management, team leader, making quick decision, but rational decision, good decision. But as well, if, if they are involved into sports, that they, it's most likely that they're going to end up well making good decision. They're not going to smoke. They're not going to try to to eat bad food. They're going to try to take care of their body if they have a game coming up because this is important for them. They want to win the game. This is important. So that's the aspect of the for kids. Of course, in general, oh, I forgot about kids. It promotes as well bone structure. A very strong bone structure for kids is very important. But for let's go on as well for the general, which means the kids and adult. Well, we 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 do a lot of we remove a lot of diseases such as heart disease. We it as well helps to fight cancer disease as well, diabetes, uh, respiratory system, immune system improve. Uh, your anxiety, you help, it helps you to deal with stress anxiety, so your mental health is actually better. Um, what else as well? Uh, and weight management. Even for kids, it's very important that as long as they remain active, they're going to keep having their metabolism fast, so they will keep being active and their weight management as they grow up, it will be healthy and in a good way. Okay, so um, just touching on the little kids for a moment. So uh, immediately I start to think um, about some of the discussions we've had, and it's about making kids, um, you know, improving their um, confidence levels, uh, making them more focused, um, making them more determined, um, you know, improve, it, it develops certain skills that allows them to succeed better, perhaps in their education, and further as they go up and grow up in life, because there is that discipline. It builds that discipline. Of course, of course, of course. Sport, sports has always been teaching discipline to, to kids, even to adults, because it teaches you that, um, well, I would put it in another way, actually. Sports or earning something by sport or physical activity is the only thing that you cannot buy, borrow, or rent. You have to earn it. So it teaches you that tenacity to work hard until you get it. So even though sometimes sports can be hard, a lot of people, they relate to sports in their education. They understood they, they were having this life moment experience in, in their sport where it was hard. It seemed impossible, but they did it. They kept pushing and then they did it. And then they relate to it when in their education, sometimes it does seem impossible. Sometimes it does seem hard but because their mind has been built into not giving up that easily, well, they will keep pushing and trying and trying until they succeed. Mm -hmm. So, so I, th I guess what we quickly went into, instead of just talking about the health benefits, we just started talking about the overall benefits of having sports in your yes. life. Okay, so then there is something interesting that I, uh, you also mentioned. You talked about weight management. And, and immediately when we think about sports, of course, we talk about weight management. So what I'd like you maybe to, to spend a couple of moments talking to us about is that relationship between weight management um, and sports and muscle building. 
Uh, now, in particular, for example, uh, there is a view um, that a girl shouldn't be doing exercises that build muscle. So can you can you just talk to us about that relationship between sports, muscle and different genders? All right. So uh, let's talk about first sports and muscle and weight management. The more you build muscle and I will explain the term building muscle will come by, by it later. The more you build muscle, the more actually you your body needs more calories. So actually to sustain your life, uh, if you're just laying down, you will require much more calories than a normal human that will have less muscle. So therefore you're burning more. So it's just math, if you think about it. So, the, so this, is, this is the first point of weight management and that's why it's very important to actually build muscle if you wanna keep your weight management because it's gonna help you to first actually burn fat because yeah. your heart rate is actually low when you do exercise and all of those things. But as well, uh, uh, well, building, uh, well, keeping your weight management and your calorie deficient. So that's very important. Now let's get back to the building muscle that people tend, or mostly girls tend to be afraid. No, it is, building muscle is, um, doesn't mean building muscle as volume wise and getting big. But it, it doesn't necessarily mean that. But building muscle can just be meaning building strength or building muscle fibers. But the volume will not increase. I trained a lot of women in the past that will that always wanted to look feminine, and I've never met them actually bulky or anything. And actually, that take years and years and years of practice with lifting heavy under a certain amount of protocol with a certain type of diet. So unless you really overloading yourself with calories and protein you will not bulk out mm -hmm. right okay. okay so then um i can tell you from my own experience and i think we we all go through those motions so if we veer slightly away from specifically on um uh, weight management but the, the the feeling that you are able to move more lightly comes very easily when you start doing more sports you're more mm -hmm. bouncy, you climb stairs a lot easier. You start seeing the results very quickly. Whereas when I go through phases where I don't actually do any sports, you know, got, get busy or get lazy, I find you, just naturally the body becomes really sluggish and all the small movements become a big effort. But when you, I start exercising and I start, um, yeah moving a bit more it just becomes so you, you feel lighter you're bouncier you move quicker well basically um there is a saying that says that you're only as old as your body is yeah. and it is not by the age that you're born but it is more by how much you're moving how healthy is your body so as long as if you stop moving and you stop exercises, this is actually the moment where your body stops growing stronger or growing in a good way and start aging. So the longer you stay in that period, the more you actually start to age. Mm. And that's why you start to feel that those rusty effect on your joint and you can't move. But then after the body is, is very adaptable in both ways. It can either go, go very good or either go very bad. That depends on you. But as soon as you start training and then one week and then it starts to happen again and then it's more fluid, more comfortable, like you said, going up the stairs, it's easier to carry things. You're feeling light, you're feeling dynamic. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like even your brain is affected by it. You're, you're feeling more awake because of your blood pressure. You, your brain is receiving more blood, so more nutrient as well. Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that. That is the other thing I see very quickly. Uh, it, it, I feel like every time I do sports, I feel it turns, it, it turns me into, a, it optimizes my efficiency. And I'm sharper at work. I can uh, spend longer hours working. I'm quicker at making decisions. And, it, it, you know, you kind of wonder that's no coincidence, can't be a coincidence because it happens every time. Well, uh, I had a lot of, uh, of um, reviews like that or feedback from, from even my clients that were people that were usually waking up at 10 sometime nine some they were very waking up during the day very late but as soon as they started training with me one week or two weeks they will send me a message and suddenly tell me i don't know why and that i woke up at seven today by myself and i will be 
yes, this is exactly what happened. Your body is actually responding to the sun. The more you become active, the more you, the more likely your body will be responding to the sun and will actually be more efficient into giving more energy and more productivity. So mm. yes, in terms of it, you can look at it as you're getting more efficient in everything. As, uh, and then I suppose we can link it back to what you said about your body and muscle building and the muscle keeps building itself. So you need to consume more energy. So it, essentially, it's just turning you into this machine. Exactly. So every time when you train, you're basically breaking muscle fibers. And those muscle fibers will need calories, will need food, most likely protein to actually rebuild itself. So your body will actually need extra calories to to repair itself, but then ask for more because your body, we, we are actually designed to adapt and thrive. I mean, think about it. We, we just went to the moon just because we wanted to, if you yes. think about it, you know, we have the power to do so much things. It's just that like, we just have to be, to have the, the right direction. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay a little bit on the topic of um, weight management, muscle activity, mm -hmm, etc. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting, and it's something you've literally just said, um, uh, there is a misconception that um, to, well, I, I don't know if it's a misconception, obviously it works. If you, if you go on these diets where it's literally starvation, you eat as little as possible, then you lose weight, and we've established that it's short term more than long term. But in fact, when you are doing sports, you're able to eat as much as you want of the healthy stuff. And I remember, if I can use a very small example to remind you, there was one conversation, and it's no secret, you and I trained before. <laughs> and, and then you said to me, can I see pictures of the food you take in? And I was surprised yes. that you felt I wasn't eating enough food. Yes, yes, I remember that. I remember. So, can well, you talk uh, to us a bit about that? Well, a lot. Of, there is a misconception, yes, about diet, and diet is like always view as eating very little portion. And a, a lot of people, when they imagine diet, they will imagine this salad plate or this empty plate of like mostly air, I would say, and just like leaves just covering on top of each other, you know. <laughs> No, it is not like this. You're not going to eat like a turtle. I can promise you. <laughs> actually, when you exercise, you actually need a lot of nutrients. You're going to need you're going to need good good vegetables. You're going to need meat. You're going to well, uh, a good source of protein: spinach, broccoli, uh, beans, lentils, chick chickpeas, eggs, fish, prawns. All of those things are good for you that you actually need to take in. Mostly, if you exercise. Uh, well, most of the people actually that exercise, they, they tend and they're trying to lose weight, they tend to under eat. It's, it is not about eating less sometimes, it's about eating the right food. Mm -hmm. And we, usually when you eat the right food, I can promise you that your plate is going to not look like empty at all. I usually have those clients that will tell me, but this is too much. No, I will get fat. And I'll be, no, you're going to eat this. And this is going to give you energy to keep pushing so you can keep burning and you keep going and until then you reach your goal and this is how it works because if you keep de depriving yourself too much then you can't keep going it's it's the same as asking a car to to drive four kilometer and just give two lit two uh two kilometer of petrol mm. that doesn't make any sense right yeah, uh, and, and, and I think we're veering slightly into nutrition, but I want us to have a whole session about food and nutrition so we can really break mm -hmm. it down because a lot of us really don't understand what we need to eat for our individual needs. Um, so we, we need to do a few sessions on those. But yes, I do remember one conversation with you where I thought that this is just too much food. It's not possible. But I, I understood and I could see the, the relationship more energy, the right type of fuel, the right type of energy gets the right type exactly. of activity out of it. So, so um, um, a final kind of like to, to allow us to move on from this topic, can you just, you had mentioned before something about uh, 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 the type of uh, fuel or petrol or oil, I think. Yes, that, yes. Yes. Can you just tell us your uh, analogy of that? Yes, well, um, 
I will give it, give you a quick example for the bad food and the, the the good food. Well, science has been proven that basically when you eat a bad type of source of food, which I will say, okay, burger, sneakers, something that is not really actually very processed food, it's not real food, it's not natural. Your body to be able to break it down will require energy. So your body will actually lose energy and not actually gain energy from it. So by eating this, you will, you're most likely to feel more tired within the next hour, but instead of feeling energized. So while food is supposed to give you energy. So let's, let's take the metaphor of uh, oil, like I like to use this one. Uh, you cannot put the same oil that you would put in an old car or like an old truck. And you're not going to put the same oil that you're going to put in a plane, for example, right? When you want, when you go, well, like for the plane, you're going to put, or for Formula One, you're going to put the best, cleanest oil ever because you're looking for the best performance of that Formula One to keep pushing, right? Yeah. You don't want to be that old truck. Well, it's exactly the same for your body. You're not going to put a bad petrol. You're not going to put a, put a bad oil if you want to perform in a good way. Yeah. And the both are very related. Very good. Okay, so then uh, let's touch on a, a, another, a, move on to a different, slightly uh, different uh, topic. And that is mm -hmm. then, well, not topic, but a different sort of uh, angle. Um, so uh, can you take us through um, some different types of activity um, um, from regular to um, high intensity activity that we can easily do, you know, around, I, I want to say, around the house without too much effort having to go to the gym so for example i'm thinking um brisk walking gardening running so what are the benefits of those or do i have to be out there in the gym lifting weights to have an impact um okay i will science has been proven that we actually need three like three resistance training a week and 120 minutes of cardio Per, per week to actually remain healthy and to reverse the process of aging day by day, right? So uh, cardio, cardio, or let's call it uh, aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise would be considered from very light, which can include walking, taking a walk, or hiking, which means inclining walking, or even like you say, gardening will be more for the joint health because you're actually bending as long as you keep a good form and you're squatting down and keeping your back straight. Uh, all of that is good. Now, the more you, you increase the intensity as taking a bike, for instance, the more you increase the speed, the more you move to from beginner to intermediate and advanced, of course. But as well, lifting weights, um, I, ha I see that the people that have the tendency to look at lifting weights or going to the gym as something very intense. The intensity is managed by you and that depends on you. So if you just want to lift light weights and take your time and take your own pace, nothing is going to be bad about it. It's not like it will be still moderate to even light activity, but it, that gym shouldn't be scaring you as it is a very, very intense workout. It yeah. is you and your own pace. And, and I think and what we're trying to promote here is that any type of movement is good. yes as opposed to yes. anything you do is still better not doing anything. Better oh, yes. Like, I mean, even me sometimes when I don't have access to a gym, I will just go for a walk. I will actually play with my daughter, meaning that I will not try to sit down. I will try to play with her toys. I will try to sit on the floor. She's one year, one year and a half. So I will just try to be on the floor with her, try to play with her toys run after her, it doesn't necessarily to have to be something so serious or something, okay, I have a plan. As long as you keep moving on your daily basis constantly, then everything is good. Okay. So then, um, Mo, um, uh, we keep hearing sometimes people say um, that there is uh, physical activity can lead or, or exercise can lead to uh, people having happier lives. So. What is the yes. relationship there? Is this just a, an idea or is this true? No, it is. It is true. It is true as uh, well. When you exercise, it helps you to, to deal with your stress management and your anxiety. But it, it helps you as well to let the negativity out. But not only this, it has been proven, for example, that if you train for 20 minutes straight without 
breaking apart, but for a session of 20 minutes without actually resting, for example, for instance, jogging, which is as simple. It doesn't have to be very fast, but after 20 minutes, your body, will, your brain will start to secrete something called endorphin. And this is a hormone that brings joy and happiness to the body. It's very similar to adrenaline. And that's why a lot of marathons are actually experiencing the release of that endorphin. And that's why they can go for hours and hours and hours. They're not feeling pain anymore. They, they're in the nirvana of having that nice hormone that is going on in their brain and they're not feeling anything. So it's very common that, yes, people that exercise are often more happier they're, because they have this hormone production in their brain that is available. And it, it's our body that is producing. We don't have any choice about it. I mean. Brilliant. Okay, Mo. So um, um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, come now to the end of this session, sadly. Okay. Uh, but because I, I, I want us to have more to talk about in the next session. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, are there any uh, tips that you can leave us with at the end of today? Uh, well, a tips can be easily followed and not followed. So rather than having a tips, uh, I'm going to have a pre-challenge mm -hmm. uh, to prepare you, Sudan, for the coming up challenge next month. And the pre-challenge will be to, until next month, to keep a tennis ball in your hand. I mean, not necessarily in your hand, but constantly with you. So if you go somewhere, if you go to the office, it can be in your pocket, it can be you carrying you, it can be in your bag, but it has to be constantly at sight and you have to be, always be uh, with it. Why is that? Is because I gave that challenge to some of my clients before and it is just, just to prove them that, it, that it, sometimes it's good to be playful. And, and if I give you the opportunity to be playful by just having a ball, I can guarantee you that within one week, you're going to end up playing with the ball. You're going to end up throwing it. You're going to end up bouncing it. You're going to end up kicking it. You're going to end up trying to, to do new things. You're going to play with it. And, and suddenly, just because of that, your stress management is going to be just out of it. You're going to be just more focused into the playful mindset rather than into the, you know, okay, work, 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 work. This is nice. And this is the only challenge. It's, it's easy. It doesn't require anything. Just a tennis ball. No okay. rules. A tennis ball. I think, Mo, I'm probably going to accept your challenge and I will come back and report. Uh, on okay. it. It's uh, again, it, it's, it reminds me when we were kids, we were always playing with something. There was always something of in course. our hands. Of course. You know? Of course. Yeah. We always had a stick. We always had uh, either a stick, either a ball, either something. We were all constantly trying to play with something and yeah. That, that was keeping us in motion. That was keeping us moving and busy. We, yeah. we are by nature very curious. So it's, it's in our DNA. So I believe that everyone will try to do something with that ball. Brilliant. So it's a tennis ball pre-challenge, Mo, accepted. Yep. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mo. Um, Thank so you. until the next session, have a nice evening the next in, in, in Honeyland nice time. <laughs> you have a nice day for you too. Cheers. All right. <laughs> See you.